Okay, we'll continue our discussion on the um, augmented Lagrangian method. And the problem we are trying to solve is minimize fx, uh, h of x, h of x equal to zero, and x is in capital X, and we define the augmented Lagrangian function as f plus lambda transpose h plus c over two norm of hx square. Okay, so this is all the a recap of what we did in the previous class, and then the the method is pick lambda k c k such that c k increases to infinity find x k star which is argument of l c k x lambda k x in capital x Yeah, lambda k should be bounded. Okay, and if this uh, sequence converges, which depends on how the sequence of lambda k converges, so if this sequence converges, then it converges to the optimal solution. Okay, and the reason why I'm saying optimal solution is because you have arg min here. If it is arg local min, then it converges to a local minimum. And what we want to do is, okay, so if we are in 1950s, okay, not in, not in 2000s, but in, if we are in 1950s, there's no way to know lambda k. So I'm just going to pick lambda k equals zero or lambda k equals some constant. Keep increasing the value of ck going to infinity. Solve this problem and progressively we will converge to uh, an optimal or a locally optimal solution. Now, somebody recognized that hey, if I pick lambda k plus one equals lambda k plus ck hxk star, uh, then under sufficiently mild conditions, this converges to lambda star. Okay. This converges to lambda star. But what is that lambda star? Okay, so let me rewrite the theorem we covered in the previous class. So I have x equals to rn, uh, you have xk star, ck going to infinity, xk, converge, xk star converges to x bar such that gradient of hx bar is full rank, Then this implies that lambda k plus c k h x k star converges to lambda bar which satisfies which satisfies gradient of x l x bar lambda bar equals to zero and h x bar equal to zero. So this is my first order necessary condition for optimality. Okay, so this is what we have. And so the idea is, in the idea for the method of multipliers, method of 
multipliers the idea is that instead of picking any random sequence of lambda k which is bounded and hopefully converges to something we pick lambda k accord lambda k plus 1 according to this fashion so your lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k h x k star and of course x k star is given by this expression yes the theorem where we say that set x is in rn yeah shouldn't it be a subspace of rn because otherwise we couldn't say like some convex subset of of rn would have that theory applied for because it's not in all of rn you know the reason why they say r it could be a convex subset of rn okay. uh, the only thing is they need the somewhere in the proof they have used the fact that gradient of lck converges to zero i mean it's equal to zero at all times so as long as you are within a neighborhood of x star you are fine okay it doesn't necessarily need to be in rn it just has x star has to be an interior point not at the boundary okay some of these are rather uh, Um, I mean, there are technical conditions for the proof to work, but I I think that the answer holds more generally. Okay, uh, it's just that when you start going to prove it, you you have to make sure that everything is watertight, and so you need to make some of these assumptions uh, to simplify the exposition. Okay, so the augmented Lagrangian method, you can pick any sequence lambda k. in method of multipliers we now have a recipe to pick an appropriate sequence of lambda k okay which depends on ck and which depends on xk star so how do you run method of multipliers so at every point of time you have lambda k and ck you compute xk star then you get lambda k plus 1 and then again you plug it in here and get xk plus 1 star and so on okay so you keep running these iterations again and again and you converge to the optimal solution of course all of this theory works extremely nicely if you have a convex problem with linear constraints okay very beautiful theory for convex problems with linear constraints um method of multipliers works wonderful uh, it's 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 very wonderful to see method of multiplier working in those situations and that's why i gave you one question in the assignment which explores the convergence of method of multipliers uh, and then a choice of ck a, is there an absolute best choice of ck or is it de depend on the objective function very good question so the question is how do we choose ck okay um we will do a couple of examples to show you how ck can be chosen um in fact you don't even need to pick ck that goes all the way to infinity okay you can pick a ck which is just constant but sufficiently large and this method still works um but the reason why you should pick ck going to infinity is to speed up your convergence so it just is faster your algorithm is faster it converges faster but otherwise in order for the convergence to work your ck need not go all the way to infinity Let's wait for the exam. Okay, we will see what else is possible. Okay, any questions so far? Yes. Oh, how often or how how often? Well, the recommendation in the book is C K plus one equals five C K every time. Uh, but we will soon see that you don't need to update it in many cases. uh why would you say so 
So the way the way you do it is let's say this x is R n. Okay, um, you pick a value of C k. You do a gr gradient descent on the augmented Lagrangian, and you converge to a point x k star. Okay, now you change the value of C k to be five C k plus one to be five C k. Now you can use this x k star as a seed to start the gradient descent for L C k plus one. Okay, the new augmented Lagrangian, and you can keep doing this again and again. So. Yes. Uh, I don't know why you are getting that kind of intuition. Uh, I'm trying to think why you would think. So, so by the way, you are running gradient descent every time for every value of CK. You are running gradient descent until XK converges to X star, XK star. So, let's say you are getting stuck in that at that time. Then it means that there is something wrong with your gradient descent algorithm itself. Um, in the sense that your step size is too large, your step size is too small. You might have some other. Um, Yes, for the method of multiplier case. And I'm, I'm going to give you a couple of examples where I'll show this behavior. OK, just wait for a few minutes. Why CK plus 1 equals 5 times CK and not something where it's just like e to the k power? Oh, uh, so this is what has been observed in practice. Now, of course, you can do e raised to CK. You're saying that why can't we have CK plus 1 equals E raised to CK? No, I was just going to go with EK plus 1 equals almost E to the K because... Uh, so oh, E raised to K, okay. If we start with CK at 1, uh, we're just going to wind up with E to the... So you are getting 5 raised to K, right? Uh, 5 raised yeah. to K plus 1. Uh, so so it's, it's, it doesn't matter. Here you are multiplying it by E and here you are multiplying it. So here you are multiplying it by 5, here you are multiplying it by E. It's 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 all fine. Okay. Yeah. There was a question here. Yeah. I just want to know if you probably will cover this in the but if if C K is sufficiently large, we always if you apply gradient descent to it, we always converge the solution without having to change it. So I assume you're adding like it's I assume C K is one by C K and then you can converge faster. Yes, you can converge faster, right. Um, so in method of multipliers you're also updating lambda k, right? Uh, Whereas in this case you don't you're not updating lambda k, so your ck must increase to infinity, because then you are not guaranteed to your x x star where it converges to is not guaranteed to be at in this set where h x is equal to zero. Okay, you got confused. So this is the augmented Lagrangian method. This is the method of multipliers method. In augmented Lagrangian method, CK has to go to infinity. In method of multipliers, CK going to infinity speeds up the convergence, but CK doesn't need to go to infinity. You can have a constant CK. Okay. Okay, so let's do an example. Not and, but uh, we'll do two examples. So, example number one, I want to minimize half of x1 square plus x2 square such that x1 equals 1. Minimize x in R2. Uh, 
Can someone tell me what the optimal solution is? It's an easy optimization problem. What's the optimal solution? One zero. Uh, it turns out that optimal eigen uh, optimal uh, uh, Lagrange multiplier is negative one for this problem. What's the augmented Lagrangian? LC of x comma lambda. That's half of x one square plus x2 square plus lambda x1 minus 1 plus c over 2 x1 minus 1 square. Questions? No? So let's find out what x star uh, of lambda and c is. So for a fixed value of lambda and for a fixed value of c, I want to minimize this expression. Uh, I'm just going to take the first derivative. So compute. So my gradient of LC is half, no. X1 plus lambda plus C X1 minus 1. And the derivative with respect to x2 will be x2 plus 0. <clears throat> okay, and this has to be equal to 0. So what I have is x star of lambda comma c is What is the solution to this? So anyways, I need a sc scrap area. So I have x1 plus lambda plus cx1 minus c equal to 0. So that gives me x1 equals to c minus lambda over 1 plus c. OK. c minus lambda over 1 plus c. 0. Okay. What is uh, H of X star lambda comma C? That's just x1 minus 1, right? So c minus lambda over lambda 1 plus c minus 1. So that is negative lambda negative 1 over 1 plus c. Okay, any questions so far? Okay. Yeah. And start iterating. Yes. So let's pick some initial value of lambda naught and c naught. And I want lambda k plus 1 equals lambda k plus c k hx k star. So that's given by lambda k plus c k negative lambda k negative 1 over 1 plus c k 
that's a lot of computation, but let's go ahead and do it. Lambda k plus lambda k c k minus c k lambda k minus c k over 1 plus c k. And so this gets cancelled with this. And I'm left with lambda k minus c k over 1 plus c k. Okay, any questions so far? So what did we do? We started with an optimization problem. We, we solved this optimization problem using Lagrange multiplier theory. We got a value of x star and we got a value of lambda star corresponding to this equality constraint. Then we computed not be computed, but we wrote the expression for the augmented Lagrangian for any value of lambda and any value of c, uh, positive value of c, and then we computed x star for that specific value of lambda and that specific value of c by setting the derivative equal to zero. And now, we started with some specific lambda naught, we started with some specific c naught, and then we computed this iteration where lambda k plus 1 is given by lambda k minus ck over 1 plus ck. Instead of just saying that for method of multipliers, there's first, this works for ck sufficiently large. Yes. Large, can we make it stricter by saying ck has to be sufficiently larger than the norm of lambda? I don't know if that is true. Um, okay, th this problem yeah. suggests it's, it, but, it might but, be but yes, that, that may not be the right bound. Okay, so yes, CK sufficiently large is sort of a vague statement, but CK being greater than the absolute value of lambda is a very specific statement, and that may not hold true always. Okay, so again, uh, how do we prove that this, ser this sequence? defined by this converges to lambda star. So let's look at lambda k plus 1 minus lambda star. That's lambda k minus c k over 1 plus c k plus 1. And that's equal to lambda k plus 1 over 1 plus c k. That right? Yeah. So this is equal to lambda k minus lambda star over 1 plus c k. Now I want you to inspect this expression um, and I'm going to rewrite this expression here. So lambda k plus 1 minus lambda star equals to 1 over 1 plus c k lambda k minus lambda star. I want you to inspect this expression and tell me when is this expression going to converge. You got, I just want to make sure I understand this, you got, uh, use the augmented Lagrangian to find x star, right? Right. In terms of c and lambda. Right. And then in order to find a non-arbitrary uh, sequence of lambda k's, right. you use the method of multipliers. Right. K plus one k plus k. Right. And using the, the method of multipliers, you are now imposing a sequence upon C so that's no longer one or it's no longer converging to infinity, but it's a sequence CK. Is that correct? Yes, yes. Understand that correctly? Yes. So so currently the C, C currently the value of CK is kind of open. It could be a constant, it could be going to infinity. I'm not imposing any constraint on CK at this point of time. All I'm saying is I want to get the update equation for lambda K. Okay. And I got the update equation for lambda k, and now my question is, does this lambda k converge to the lambda star 
that we started with. Okay. Um, but more importantly, what I want to get at is for what values of CK would this convergence hold? Okay. So remember we said that CK has to be sufficiently large or CK has to go to infinity. So CK eventually becomes sufficiently large. But that's not very precise statement. So how large should CK be in order for the method of multipliers to converge? Now we are trying to find a value of CK or not a value, but what values of CK, for what values of CK would the method of multiply converge for this particular problem? Okay. So we have this expression, lambda K plus one minus lambda star. The update equation is given by this expression. And I don't follow that last equality. Why is lambda K plus one equal to lambda K minus lambda star? Oh, so because this plus one is minus lambda star. Why? You multiply it by one plus CK <laughs> You're just combining fractions. Yeah. I'm just, uh, so you have lambda K plus one here. I just want to get this expression in terms of lambda K minus lambda star because only then I can consider uh, so remember, I want to get the sequence. I want to understand the convergence of lambda k with respect to lambda star. Yes. So agree. all I need to do is make sure that the entire expression is written as a difference of lambda k plus one minus. I, I follow. Yeah. That. But since when is taking lambda k and adding one the same thing? As taking okay. So let me do it the longer way, <laughs> which doesn't really change anything. So I I'll write it as lambda k minus lambda star plus lambda star minus one, or lambda star plus one over one plus CK. Okay, and this is zero. Okay. Okay, uh, yeah. So uh, what we fundamentally want is, is to have XK plus one minus, sorry, a lambda K plus one minus lambda star divided by lambda k minus lambda star are to be less than one, which occurs when ck is greater than zero. Okay, so Matthew's claim is if ck is greater than zero, then this uh, difference converges to zero eventually. Okay, the, not eventually, but asymptotically, as k goes to infinity. How many of you agree with this claim? Okay, only Matthew agrees with this claim. <laughs> Okay, a few people agree with it. Okay, how many of you don't agree with Matthew's claim that if CK is positive, then this sequence is not going to converge to zero? Uh, okay, CK is not going to infinity, okay? If CK is going to infinity, this will converge to zero much, much faster, okay? But I'm, all I'm saying is, let's say CK is a constant. Okay, CK is equal to C for all K. Okay, as long as CK is positive, this thing will converge to zero. Okay, now if CK is going to infinity, this thing will converge to zero much, much, much faster than, um, than if CK were a constant. Okay, but in order to show convergence, all you need is CK being positive for this problem. So CK greater than zero implies that lambda K minus lambda star converges to zero as K goes to infinity, okay? And if CK was going to infinity, it'll converge much faster. Any question so far? Yes. So, why is the lambda k converts to lambda star? Why do you know lambda star is lambda? Yeah, so we know lambda star is negative. So, this example is not to get the value of lambda star. It is to illustrate that what happens when ck, when you change the value of ck, when you keep the value of ck constant, <coughs> what happens? Okay, and this essentially illustrates that you need not 
take CK going to infinity in the method of multiplier, <coughs> just keep it constant as long as it is sufficiently large, your algorithm will converge to the optimal solution. So uh, that's it will converge uh, with an infinite number of iterations. Is there anything we can start to say about uh, the amount of time it takes to computationally converge? Because we have the idea of needing to evaluate the argmen of, of LC. Lagrangian right. and, and then and do the updating with CK. So can we say anything about the impact that CK will have on solving the augmented Lagrangian versus how many iterations it'll take to converge to a useful value? So, so uh, it's not there in the book, which is that the number of iterations it's going to take for you to converge to the optimal solution, that particular aspect is not there in the book. And I haven't studied it anywhere else. Okay, But that just could be because I've never studied this uh, particular topic in great detail. Um, but my feeling is, based on my preliminary knowledge of uh, this method, my feeling is that it's very hard to compute how many iterations you need to make in order to get to an optimal solution. Because this problem doesn't have enough structure to be able to say something like that. Now, if you say f is whatever, linear, h is linear, and this is rn, so everything is kind of nice and, <coughs> yeah, if everything is nice, then probably you can come up with the number of iterations, but in this generality, it's hard to come up with the number of iterations it takes to converge to the solution. Maybe it was more about, uh, can we say anything about like linearly increasing C in the augmented Lagrangian, and does that linearly increase is the difficulty of solving the augmented Lagrangian, and, and we can compare the rate of increase in CK to what we expected to do to the convergence time. Um, versus no, I, it's not there in the book. Yeah, it's uh, I, and I haven't seen such a result in any other optimization book, so I don't know if it can be done. Now let's make a small change to this problem, okay? And I don't want you to write it up, okay? Just listen to me. So I'm going to make a small change, and the small change is I'm going to take negative of x1 square plus x2 square, okay? So in, e, uh, in the previous example, we had positive x1 square. Now I take negative x1 square. It changes many things here. In particular, lambda star is equal to 1. So that's the first change. Uh, we'll have negative here. We'll have negative here. What else? 1 minus c. So we'll have c minus lambda over c minus 1. Okay, uh, and then I'm just going to write this expression, lambda k plus 1 minus lambda star. You can do all this computation easily, following the same steps. Now for this iteration, I can, give me a minute. I can say that lambda k plus 1 minus lambda star is given by negative 1 over c k minus 1 lambda k minus lambda star. When does this sequence converge? Lambda k minus, when, so under what condition on c k would lambda k minus lambda star converge to 0? Yes. Uh, C has to be greater than zero. That's by the construction of augmented Lagrangian. So I, I need C to be strictly positive. Greater than? Uh, so let me take, okay, so CK greater than one. So let me take CK equals 1.001. Two, okay. 
<laughs> okay, so CK is, if CK is 1.001, then lambda K plus one minus lambda star goes to whatever, infinity. At least the absolute value goes to infinity. So it doesn't work. But if CK is greater than two, then yes, then lambda K plus one minus lambda star is equal to one, uh, let me take CK equals 2.001. Then I have 1.001 .001 lambda k minus lambda star. So this goes to zero. Okay, so yes, so if ck is greater than two, this method converges. Now if ck is going to infinity, this method converges even faster. Okay. Can we say something about uh, that approach also being oscillatory? Okay? Because as we still have the negative term, and so right. it's going to so be more fragile than just the, the straight decay we had in the previous problem. You, you know, I cannot say it's going to be fragile because just because a negative term is, is, is there is a negative multiplicative factor, it just means that lambda k plus one is, lambda k is going to oscillate around lambda star and then it will convert. So it doesn't mean it is exhibiting a fragile behavior. Okay. Um, yeah, and you have taken 3551, so you kind of know what this, right, oscillatory behavior. It appears in many control systems. Okay, so now, coming back to your point, CK being greater than absolute value of lambda star doesn't help. Okay. Is that sufficiently large or CK is sufficiently large, yeah. So CK has to be sufficiently large, which means yeah, it's not very clear what the value of CK should be. So if you take CK going to infinity, at some point of time, it will become sufficiently large for you to guarantee convergence. Yeah, sufficiently large always seems to mean like more than, than three orders of magnitude more, so that still holds. Right. Holds. Um, yes. With uh, the minimization problem to begin with for both of these, shouldn't we have by inspection eliminated and the x1 value from the minimization problem because we only had we a could, yeah. quality constraint. Yes, I mean, if we were just solving the minimization problem, then you don't need to do this minimization at all. But I wanted to exhibit for what values of lambda k, for what values of ck would this method of multipliers converge? Okay. okay. Any other question? Yes. Can we have a similar expression for the, for the general case? So the general case, what's the general case? The augmented Lagrangian method? Yes, general problem. Can we have similar uh, sequence? Oh, Simulation. general problem as in with inequality constraint? No, no, no. No. If we have the augmented Lagrangian uh, problem, mm -hmm. if x plus uh, lambda hx is a general expression, can yeah. we have similar uh, expression for the sequence? Mm -hmm. Lambda k plus one Yeah, I mean you can define this thing more generally. The problem is when will you, how will you be able to compute in closed form expression what lambda k minus lambda star is going to be? So here we had quadratic cost linear constraint. We were able to do it by hand, but it's not possible to do it by hand all the time. Uh, and I think when you're saying general case, uh, we cannot do it by hand. It will hold true, but Doing it by hand require. It, it, I mean, it's just not possible to get closed form expression. If we can general expression for this sequence, we can estimate the value of C k. Right. Which lets you work. Right. Right. Okay. Any other question? No. Okay. So now the question is, how do we tackle? inequality constraints. So I want some fresh ideas, some new ideas. If I have inequality constraint here, so I'm going to erase this part. So now I put gx less than equal to zero. How do I use augmented Lagrangian now? Any thoughts? So
So the question is, how do I convert this to an equality constraint problem? Do we just pass it along to the sub-optimization problem um, for the augmented Lagrangian and, and handle it there like we have previously? Uh, no, I don't think uh, that might work. Yes. So you're trying to make it as an equality constraint? Yes. Um, in that case, well, okay, I don't know how to make it an equality constraint yet, but if, yes. if it were an equality constraint, then you would get some lambda 1 times h of x and then plus lambda 2 times g of x if g of x is if, equality. Yes, if g of x was equality, then that's what you will get. Okay, so. Um, but now I have an inequality constraint here. So what do we do? Yes. Can you start by trying to see if there's a solution for g of x equals zero and then start minimizing? No, that's a slippery slope. Okay, so her idea is let's replace this inequality constraint by equality, and if we get a solution, then what do we do? Okay, so you have to keep doing, keep reducing the value of g x equals zero, g x equals zero minus 0 0.1, gx equals minus 0 0.2. Keep doing it, it's just a lot of computation. Augment the KKT approach and generate a new penalty expression for when we deviate from the g of x and it's less than or equal to zero? So you are saying that I just put max of g of x comma zero equal to zero? No. Well, we had the KKT the, um, approach to mm -hmm. augmenting the Lagrangian to handle you That's how we did that. that you know, we so, did that. Oh, uh, we could come up with mm. a similar penalty approach uh -huh. when we're deviating away from the less than or equal to zero uh, uh, set for g of x. Uh, and I don't think there should be a, a difference okay. from how we handle that from deviating. So away it's from the idea is similar, and here is how I'm going to transform this problem. So I want to minimize over x and z in R R f of x such that h x equal to zero and g j of x plus z j square is equal to zero. Okay, for all j one to r. Okay, so what we did was increase the dimension of the variables over which we are doing the optimization. And then we have equality constraint problem. And we can apply log augmented Lagrangian to this particular set of constraints. Yes? Why is there slack variable squared? Uh, so if I, if I put, you can do zj, and then you can put z greater than equal to 0. Both of them works. Okay, so this has to be a positive number. It can't be negative. Okay? So these are known as slack variables. Okay. And it has some... Uh, it has some use in, in life. So, uh, what do I mean by that? Uh, see that in this case, your optimization problem is in n dimensions, whereas in this case, your optimization problem is in r n cross n plus r, n plus r dimension. So what you have done effectively is you have a hammer. You want to apply that hammer. That hammer doesn't apply to this problem. So you increase the dimension of the problem, and now that hammer becomes applicable, okay? And that's what uh, the use of this, this uh, technique of using slack variable is, okay? You know an algorithm that works for equality constraint? You want to use it for inequality constraint problem, lift the dimension of the problem, okay? Increase the dimension of the problem, now you can use that algorithm. Okay. So g g remember g of x is a vector. G one of x, g two of x, g r of x. 
So it's the jth component of g of x. <coughs> we have done it several times. So g of x, g1 of x, gr of x, right? We've done it in linear programming and we've done it in many other optimization problems. Okay, any further questions? Perfect. So now I want to, yeah. So uh, the uh, uh, G of a J of X, what dimension is that in? It's only going to be a single dimensional problem there? Each of these? Yeah. Yeah, okay. these are going to be single dimensional. So G is a function from, H is a function from Rn to Rm. G is a function from Rn to Rr. Okay. Okay. So now we will talk about uh, sequential quadratic programming, and I want to start with the motivation today. I want to solve this problem. Okay, this problem. And the way to solve this problem is fine. I mean, I can equivalently, not equivalently, but I can cast that problem as find x bar and lambda bar such that gradient of x l x bar lambda bar equals to zero and h of x bar equal to zero. So I need to solve these. These are n equations and these are m equations, and this is a vector in Rn cross m. So I have n plus m. So I have n plus m unknowns and n plus m equations. And I can solve these equations to find these unknowns. Okay? And they will satisfy, if I can find such a value of x bar and lambda bar that satisfies these equations, then they are then they satisfy the first order necessary condition for optimality for this problem. Okay, so they could be a candidate optimal solution. Now the question is how do I solve this n plus m equations in n plus m unknowns? Okay, um, let's try to come up with a very naive idea. Don't we also need a statement then that uh, uh, del L H is regular at x because we didn't Say that right, right. Uh, oh. Okay, so yeah, so that's what you want, right? Okay, so let's assume that we also need to make sure that gradient of h x bar is regular. Um, okay, but let's let's not worry about this at the moment. We want to find a solution to these n plus m equations in n plus m unknowns. So, what's a naive way to solve this problem? Any thoughts? <laughs> no, that may not work. Okay, so here is a naive idea. Naive idea. I define a function p of x comma lambda, which is the norm of uh, the second, the first derivative of L plus norm of h, okay? And I, I, and I say that I want to minimize p of x comma lambda over x comma lambda, okay? I can use gradient descent, I can use whatever method, Newton's method, gradient descent, or BFGS method, or DFP method, or whatever. Right? I, can, I have so many things in my arsenal to use to solve this problem. But what's the, what's the problem with this sort of function? If we solve it, what happens if we find such a value of x bar and lambda bar? Yes? Isn't it ambiguous whether it's positive or negative? Is 
whether it's positive or negative. So this, oh, so this is always positive because it's norm of yeah. something. So it's always going to be non-negative, greater than or equal to zero. Right. Yeah. It may not be differentiable. Uh, no, everything is smooth, so okay. it's differentiable. Everything is smooth. It's differentiable. Any other thoughts? So first of all, minimizing this will not allow us to conclude whether the point x bar and lambda bar we have found is a local minimum or a local maximum, right? Because all we are doing is minimizing this quadratic function which, okay, so what would px, px comma lambda look like? So this is my x comma lambda. This is my px comma lambda. It might look something like this, okay? And this would be one solution. This would be another solution. Remember that if we converge to this point, it doesn't even satisfy these expressions, right? Uh, so it may not work, then we have to redo the entire computation with a different initial condition. We might converge here, which again is not, does not satisfy the first derivative being equal to zero and hx bar being equal to zero. Here, it does satisfy these two conditions at this point, but the problem is I don't know whether it's a candidate for local maximum or for a local minimum, okay? So we need to come up with something better, something which is not as naive as solving a system of equations. So one idea is to come up with a penalty function, just like we did in augmented Lagrangian. So the idea is to come up with a penalty function, add it to the objective function, and then see whether an unconstrained minimization of the overall objective plus penalty function is going to give us the solution or not. So here is, here is the idea. I define my, I define my penalty function P of X to be max of I absolute value of HI of X and then I say that I want to minimize x in Rn fx plus c px. Okay, I'm going to make the simplification here that x is in equal to Rn here. Okay, what's the problem with this approach? Any thoughts? So remember we have an absolute value here. So that makes the objective function non-differentiable. Okay. Uh, we will see how to get around that problem uh, in the next class. So what prevents us from going back to the naive idea and adding f of x? because of the minimum value that was only going to be. So you're saying I add f of x here? Yeah, because that will give us a minimum. Or that will, or we'd only have maximums there. Uh, so that will give us the minimum. That kind of requires a little bit of thinking. Why would you say so? Because uh, that function originally can only minimize to zero when we have the solutions to the first Mm -hmm. conditions. So mm -hmm. we can essentially keep the piece we already had as saying we have a candidate point right. and then we want to minimize among the candidate points. So you want to maybe add a multiplicative factor here sure. so as to minimize the effect of this and have more weightage for the F but I think that will also lead to some problem. Um, anyway, I think we should leave that for a future discussion. It may or may not work, okay? 
Um, but, but the idea is, instead of having a penalty function that looks something like this, where we cannot prove anything, we have to take the penalty function more carefully. And this is the penalty function that we will choose, we will work with for the next uh, topic. And this is the optimization problem that we would like to solve. It's an unconstrained optimization problem. We have fx plus cpx, and we will look at some of the benefits of trying to solve this optimization problem, and how exactly can we solve this optimization problem. So we'll study it in the next class. Thank you, and uh, have a good weekend.